on the field. It's a miracle. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. Welcome into the Feels Like 99 podcast, the home of your Tennessee Titans. I'm your host, Drake Kaiser, and I am joined as always by my co-host, Caleb Waters. How long have we been waiting to record this? (laughs) I think it has probably been two weeks without an episode, so this will be like the third week in a row, I guess, that finally, I guess now we'll have an episode, but there's been a two-week gap in episodes. That's wild, man, but, you know, everybody has to take their time off, I guess. I mean, I'm not even sure if they their time off, uh, well, but anyways. Not really time off, like you said. It was more, more like time doing just other things, time off from this, but, man, we've both been insanely busy, I know. Dude, it's like I wake up in the mornings, I'm like, wow, like, I wish I could sleep for, like, 12 more hours. And the next thing I know, I'm laying back down for bed. So if that tells you, you know, how my time is going, you know. That's exactly how I feel, too. Like, it's it's literally every day, wake up, and, like, what, 50 things do I have to get done? And then as soon as I get them done, it's like, oh, it's uh, 1 in the morning, so time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, episode 13, the Taewon Taylor episode. Drake, yeah. I know this is special to you. Yeah, of course, of course. The the Hilltoppers. I'm pretty sure he's like, I can't even honestly think of another number 13 that we've had in recent memory. Come so on. I'm yes, you can. I'm going to have yes, to go and say he's the best. <laughs> is he better than Kendall Wright? Uh, see, if I didn't even remember that Kendall Wright was 13 off the top of my head, I'm like... He was good that one season, you know what I mean? Like, he had his kind yep. of breakout year and then, ugh, fell off. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, speaking of receivers, the Feels Like 99 Twitter account had a very special tweet today. Drake, do you want to tell them what it was about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, today's Tuesday. We're actually recording a little bit early this week in hopes that we could maybe get this out a little bit earlier, maybe Thursday, but it, it probably will be Friday knowing our hectic schedule. But... Regardless, on Tuesday of this week, um, we posted a tweet. It was Bleacher Report did this really cool video kind of like mapping out all the different uh, trade destinations for Jarvis Landry. And they did some really cool Photoshop work and just little quotes and stuff. And so, uh, you know, I grabbed a couple screenshots from those and kind of compiled it into one little tweet. And yeah, it was it was basically just saying uh, it was Chris Sims, I think, that was quoted as saying um, Jarvis Landry would fit really well into the Titans. Uh, new offensive scheme, obviously with Matt Lafleur, and pretty much any team is always looking for a slot receiver to you know just basically be that security blanket. I mean, every Tom Brady needs their Wes Welker in a sense. You know, he's definitely been Ryan Tannehill's safety blanket. So the question that the tweet posed was, you know, he would definitely fit into Matt Lafleur's offense, but will the asking price be too high for John Robinson? So Caleb, I ask you, what would be the right ask- Asking price if you were John Robinson. Hmm. You know, that's kind of tough. Considering, like, all the needs that we have all around the, like, in the defense side of the ball and even the offensive side of the ball still, I think if I'm John Robinson, I can find, like, diamonds in the rough late in the draft. So you could probably give up a first-round pick, maybe, if you think it's worth it. But just just a straight-up first-round pick. What did the Titans have, like, the 25th pick, I think? So I would give up first round, and if they were like, we want more than that, I would give them a third-round pick and then probably a – a starter on the offensive side of the ball. If it's, I don't know if it's Demarco or uh, Harry Douglas. I wish we could get rid of him, <laughs> but that's probably about it. Be willing to throw in Tajay Sharp, uh, you, you know, kind of a, that young type of prospect. He had that good rookie season, even probably better than Taewon. But obviously, last year he was out for the whole year because we didn't want to cut him. But he had the injury that probably would have kept him out a little while. So, what what are your? Would you be willing to put him in there? Putting him in for the third round pick or the first round pick? Well, just, you know, just accompanying, like, say, okay, they want the first round pick, and um, we don't really want the third round pick, but we want something else. Um, 
I, I would say, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, the receiver play was decent this year. What's it going to hurt to get rid of a guy that wasn't there all year? That's true. I mean, he has Landry has already been to three straight Pro Bowls in the past three years, and he's putting up. That's that's the comparison I've seen from Dolphins fans is Wes Welker. Like they don't want him to get away like Wes Welker did, and it seems like for whatever reason the Dolphins are just not interested in bringing him back, even though they've overpaid on so many other people. I guess they're trying not to overpay, but if you're going to overpay, I think it would be on your own player, but. Regardless, I don't know. I mean, for me, if I were John Robinson, kind of like you said, maybe a first round pick, maybe the 25th pick, which is already so low, it's almost a second round pick anyway. Exactly. Like, I wouldn't be that upset to give up just that, but I would not want to give up much else because a first round pick for a basically a slot receiver, I mean, like, I told you this before the podcast, like he's not Antonio Brown, he's not AJ Green, like he's not going to stretch the field or anything like that. He's just a good plug and play receiver, a security blanket type of guy. And if him and Mariota could develop that type of connection like a Welker and Brady, I mean, we would call it the best trade ever, but you just can't predict stuff like that. So I would just be really weary of giving up much more than just the first round pick. Yeah, and you know, like you said, it, it kind of hit me like, What's going to be there at 25 that you know is going to be like a dependable, you know, a pick that's worth that 25th pick? A lot of times, in my opinion, if I have that pick in like Madden or something, I trade it. Like just because there's there's not going to be a lot there. If you, I think you could trade like... You can't trade picks like 1 to 20, but I think you can trade picks from 21 to 32, and I think that's what the Titans should do. But I think they should throw in Kevin Dodd. See, that's something, yeah, maybe some, if they're looking for players, then you give them fringe guys, guys that you think maybe could be projects or whatever else, but I think Tajay Sharp kind of fits in that same thing too. He's obviously had more success than Dodd, but they're both, kind of like you said, they're dying in the rough. You're going to have to do work on them before they can be, you know, productive members of the team. So they're high risk, high reward type of guys. People forget Kevin Dodd was a second round pick, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. So speaking of draft picks, this week, the NFL Combine was in Indianapolis. This Troy Aske. Oh man, he can run. Why are you surprised, Dan? Oh, Oh. you know why I'm surprised. I can't say it on TV, but he can run, run. (laughs) He was a track guy. Right. He was a track guy. But but you're saying it with the You don't tone. see that much. You're saying it the tone. Back. Let's call it what it is. I like that. He man. just ran four three five. Hey man, I mean go hug at him. 215 pounds. I'm gonna hug him. <laughs> hey man, that was good, man. <laughs> you can run run. Excuse me, two hundred pounds. <laughs> I try. How are you man? Good job. <laughs> And I was thinking, why is it in Indianapolis every year? Drake, do you have any idea why? You know, other than just maybe the central location, I honestly have have no idea why it's there. So, the first league-wide scouting combine was held in New Orleans in 1984. After one year in Arizona and a return to New Orleans, it came to Indianapolis in 1987 because it was centrally located and had a domed stadium. Yeah, and then it stayed there even when, especially it stayed there whenever they built them Lucas Oil instead of the RCA Dome that was there before. Yes. So, I mean, the Combine has like, it has contracts of where it can be. And it'll be in Indianapolis through at least 2020. But that Rams like stadium facility thing, it could be there in 2020. I guess that's cool. I mean... Anyways, uh, Drake, what was the most intriguing thing from the Combine that you saw? All right, so the most intriguing thing from this Combine to me was, just like every other year, there were a lot of rapid risers and you know steep declines as far as draft stock and positioning and all that type of thing. So Orlando Brown from Oklahoma, the offensive lineman, had an absolutely terrible workout. And apparently he got yelled at for loafing by the position coaches during, you know, the positional type drills and just really had a bad showing. And now they're saying that he might have dropped, you know, rounds for his performance. But then you also have guys like 
I think the story of this combine, and definitely my favorite player from this combine, is uh, Shaquem Griffin from UCF. And I just think that it's an amazing story that a guy that only has one hand could be such a transcendent player. I mean, this is the guy that ran the fastest 40 time by a linebacker since they've been doing electronic time at the combine. He repped 20 reps of 135 on bench with one hand. He had that, you know, the prosthetic, you know, to help him with the other side. But his that other arm doesn't have a hand on it, but it's still just as strong. Like, and you watch the tape, and he jumps off the tape. Like, it's amazing that somebody that does not have the other hand can still generate so much explosiveness, can get off of blocks. I mean, he bull rushes with one hand and beats off his lineman that way. Like, and he's obviously fast, and he's very physical, big hitter. I think that he would be, even if you don't want to start him on day one, I think that he would be a fantastic special teams, like linebacker, you know, gunner type guy. Yeah. So I am, I'm very, very impressed with him. And honestly, I'd, I'd love to have him on the Titans if we're being honest. Definitely, you know, me too. But did you see that Roger Goodell ran a 40 in the NFL office? Yes, I did see that. And it was really funny because Dave Portnoy, you know, that runs Barstool, I thought for some reason that he was getting mad at Rich Eisen for like running that 40 at the combine, like the fake one, you know? Yeah. And then I realized it was Roger Goodell in the video and not him. <laughs> Dude, do you know that Roger Goodell ran a faster 40 than Orlando Brown? I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt it. I it. <laughs> 100% serious. I mean, I just don't know how... Or why, like, if you were going to do that, why not just fake an injury or something? Like, if you don't want to do the combine, then just be like one of those guys that's like, oh, I'll, you know, I'm just going to do my pro day or whatever. Like, why would you show up and hurt yourself? Maybe to not go to the Browns. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he, it just seemed to me like he actually killed it. Like, he just looks like Hainsworth or something. Just like a complete lazy bum. Yeah, I mean, it's absurd. So is that everything you have to say about the combine? Yeah, yeah, I think mostly just it, it's pretty much the same as every year. You know, guys run and pretty much everybody falls in line with kind of the same average 40 times. There's fast guys, slow guys, whatever. But I think it yeah. all plays out in in the draft. People are going to be drafted where they're going to be drafted. And we still have pro days coming up. So the quarterbacks and everything, regardless of what they do at the combine, they'll all look better at the pro day and we'll start all over with what we <laughs> think about them. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. Hip hop artist Lil Uzi Vert, based in Philly, baby. I love this single money longer. Stay tuned to see more of his performance during Inside the NBA later tonight. Money longer, Lil Uzi Vert. He was terrific. We loved watching him. So th for this week's episode, we'll do something a little different. I have a list of subtopics that Drake and I have not discussed yet, just to see, you know where this could go um so first drake have you seen that the titans have now released an uh, the otp podcast aka the official titans podcast what are your thoughts on that i don't even know if you've seen anything about it i actually saw that today in class and i saw it right before i was about to hit the compose tweet button for the jarvis landry tweet and um you know I'm not sure exactly what to think about it. I mean, I'll probably give it a listen. I mean, I like Mike Keith, but I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Like, I feel like we run into this problem, too. Like, there are not many Titans podcasts, but even as many as there are, you just don't want to get lost in the waters of, like, doing the same thing as everyone else. So, like, it's just hard to generate new content when you're only talking about one team. Definitely. Uh, I think that them making a, an official Titans podcast is lame. That is so dumb. How many other teams do you see that have an official podcast? That's what I was thinking. Like, when you said that, I honestly kind of agreed with you. Like, I really don't know if any other team does that. Like, whatever. Maybe all feels like that and scared them. Yeah, maybe they saw <laughs> us and they're like, man, we got we to gotta step up our game. I mean, maybe, you know, it, it has, you know, it has potential. But at the same time, like, if they're not going to talk about things that 
people don't already know, then why are you having it? Well, that's kind of what I mean. I'm like, okay, this is like a total side topic, but this is something that I was listening to on the way home just now. Have you seen all this stuff about Tubby Smith and his um, – he basically said in a press conference the other day that players should have to sit out a year after they transfer because if not, then it's going to teach players how to be quitters or something to that effect. All right, yeah, I kind of read a little something about it. Yeah, so basically he's saying this is a coach that has changed teams, especially in the last decade, more times than I can count. Like Honestly, I thought Tubby Smith was still at Minnesota, so <laughs> I had no clue he was even at Memphis. So that just goes to show you, like, and it's not just him. I'm not even just picking on him. I mean, but coaches change jobs like they change shoes. I mean, it's every, it's every year coaches change jobs. And he was wanting to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, players shouldn't be allowed to leave because it will teach them, you know, they, they can't establish good relationships if they change schools every year. And, you know, coaches spend a lot of time recruiting them somewhere. And if they leave, then, you know, the university and the coach have just wasted their time. Well, I wanted the interviewer. He was, this was on like Golik and Wingo or something. I just wanted them to be like, kind of like you're getting at with this podcast thing. If you're not going to ask the hard hitting questions then why even do it? Because that when he said that, if I was the interviewer, I would have said right there, okay, so you're saying that it's wrong for kids to leave because it hurts their relationship with the coaches and whatever else. So why is it that you get to leave and other coaches get to leave and you have no regard for how you've affected your relationship with the player? The player will hurt the coach because he leaves. But then the coach leaves, and the player who came here just for you, now you're gone. So what does he do? Like, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And, like, I don't know, just so many media outlets, they just – I don't know if you've seen it or noticed it, but so much interviewing now is all about – I call them, like, softball questions. They're just so easy to just – hit it out of the park with a perfect little answer and just move on. You know, they don't ask anything that would actually be like offensive or controversial at all. Yeah. I'm so tired of the media being like, so scared to hurt somebody's feelings. Like I want some hard hitting stuff. Like if you're talking to Tubby Smith and he's staying some ridiculous stuff about transferring, like call him out. Like, dude, you've had like five jobs in 10 years. Yeah. Like, how is it that you're saying that kids can't leave a school because it's going to hurt you, but yet you're not even here? Like, yeah, I don't know. But so uh, another topic, kind of Titans related, but not really. Nashville Mayor Megan Barry. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today is March sixth. It is. And this morning she was charged with like ten grand of like stolen money or something of like public funds. I don't know. I don't know what the wording was. Yeah. But she was caught having an affair with her bodyguard. I know a lot of uh, people would have a fit if a male mayor was, you know, doing the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> Why do you think this has been so brushed under the rug? I mean, I was kind of talking about this this morning. I, I woke up this morning and saw the tweet that said, you know, she's expected to resign this morning, today, whatever. And um, me and my roommate, Logan, have talked about this before, you know, like in regard to her, I mean. So kind of your question is more about why is it that just because that she's a woman, it's almost like it's okay that she can have an affair with, you know, a male. But if it was a male mayor having this type of affair, it would be almost like, you know, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky type thing. Like, I don't know. Like, you're right. Like, people are taking up for her. Like, this isn't a big deal. Like, well, I mean, it's her business. Like, if she wants to cheat on her husband and, like, whatever. Like, she's a good mayor. Like, okay, well, Bill Clinton was a good president. But, like, he still cheated on his wife in the Oval Office. Like, it's just not morally correct. And so, like, you can't have this double standard, I guess, with that type of thing. And, like, some people are saying, like, oh, well, 
why would she resign now? Like it's going to hurt her proposal for like the transit system and all that stuff. Like, well, then you shouldn't have done what you did. If you're trying to get a Nashville transit system, then you shouldn't have been doing things that would compromise your ability to get it done. Yeah. I don't know. I've got, I, I just think the whole thing is kind of crazy, especially with how popular Nashville is becoming. Well, yeah, it is kind of a bad time to get caught in a scandal, isn't it? <laughs> oh, couldn't be worse. Especially because I saw, you know, just a few weeks ago, you know, we're trying to get like the NFL draft and whatever. And then we've got our mayor getting basically fired, having to resign and whatever. Like, there's no way we're going to get the draft now. Yeah, that's for sure. Lofton on the left wing. He's going to fire a bomb and drills it. Money! Now we have a little something, something. Anonymous fan questions. Mm. So, it's kind of a new segment. Not really. Pretty much the same thing as a normal fan questions, just anonymous. So you can DM the Feels Like 99 Twitter account and ask whatever you want, and it will, if we have enough and we feel like they're good enough, we will feature them on the next episode. So with that being said, here's the first one. Can't say who it came in from unless you want it. So these did not. Um, the first one is, which Titan is most likely to walk around the locker room without wearing a towel after a shower? I 100% have my answer locked in, buzzed in right now, Taylor Lewan, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see that. <laughs> hmm, dude, my my, uh, my guess is Eric Weems. <laughs> Eric Weems? <laughs> I don't know why. He just seems like that kind of guy. I'm going to say Marcus, actually. I'll change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's probably he's probably one of those guys that like takes a shower in one of like I don't know what the Titans like shower rooms are like, but if they like he probably like takes a towel in there with him and wraps himself up immediately. <laughs> yeah, he probably showers in like swim trunks and flip flops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's a, that was a pretty good one. That made me laugh actually. So uh, the second one is who is the most hated Titan in the locker room and who, I guess, was the most hated coach on staff, the previous staff? So if we're talking most hated in our own locker room, hmm, you'd almost think it would have to be one of the – I'm trying to think of someone who, like, always gets playing time but really shouldn't. <laughs> um <laughs> I would almost have to go with someone like a uh, like a Harry Douglas. I think that probably a lot of the younger receivers resent him for still getting the touches and the opportunities, even though I feel like at least a lot of the time we should be getting younger players reps, considering that he's not a part of our future plans. And if someone's not a part of your future plans anyway – like, why are they getting more reps than someone that figures to be in your future plans? Mine would have to be Eric Decker. Just because, you know, he drops a lot of passes. I know a lot of fans dislike him. I like him. I think he's a good player. There's some stuff, you know. Is it wrong to say you don't like a person for what their significant other does? That too, yes. Um, she <laughs> definitely gets on my nerves quite a bit, mostly with the, you know, just constant criticism and basically just acts like everything is everyone but his fault. And a lot of the time, I mean, if you want to complain, then complain to him because he dropped the pass. <laughs> It's kind of like Steph and Aisha Curry. When she went on that rant about the NBA was rigged or whatever, that was yes. so ridiculous. Yeah. But no, I like Eric Decker. But my, think I think both of our answers. Will bring him back next season? Even I like, hope so. That was just a one-year deal. I think he's a veteran guy. I think he, I think he likes it here. I don't know. Tough. I think if he wants to keep playing and would be willing to do it, you know, for a – I mean, he didn't have a huge role anyway, but a little bit decreased role maybe and for a decent little contract, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing him back on another one-year deal. Yeah, me either. So I think both of our answers for the next part of that question was who's the most hated 
coach. I definitely think, you know, without a doubt, it was Terry Robisky. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I don't think there could be anyone else really on the staff. I mean, most of them, we didn't even know their name because when they got fired and everything, I didn't even know that they were on the staff to begin with. And, you know, I think the only other one that was like really, really notable was Russ Grimm. And I think that was just because he was so universally liked. And same thing with uh, LeBeau, too. I think they were very, very well liked. And I think Robisky was not. <laughs> This is the last one. Uh, I've had a little bit of time to think about it. Uh, Drake is not, so it should take by surprise. What do you love and hate about your co-host? And what do you love and hate about the Feels Like 99 podcast? Since you've had more time to think about it than me, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> uh, None for a while. He doesn't do that. So he gets on, gets on. One time he did shove me at full practice. <laughs> but uh, he's a pretty good co-host. If I ever had a problem, you know, like I had some math problem. I didn't know I asked Drake. He would know. Anybody that's listening that's thinking of making a podcast, your first call should be Drake. Uh, what, do I, what do I love and hate about Feels Like 99? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I love about Feels Like 99. The artwork we always put out is really good. I uh, don't really hate much about the podcast, except maybe our Twitter interaction, which we will have a little surprise later. Well, let's see. For as far as things that I like and dislike about my co-host... Hmm. Definitely the like is very easy. Would definitely be, you know, the, like you said, we've known each other forever, really good friends, talk about anything and everything. That's kind of the reason that we started this in general anyway, is because like we already talk all the time about everything. So like, why not talk about the Titans, which is something that we both share a passion for. So obviously that, um, as far as like dislike about my co host I don't even know. I mean, just like, you, I can't really fault you, but like, we both are so busy sometimes. Like, it's hard to get on the same page. And like, we both, I think we both have that fault is like, we kind of put this on the back burner because you, you almost have to. Cause like, this really is like relatively low priority, but like, I know we both want to do it, but sometimes it gets kind of pushed to the back. But it happens. Life happens. Life is more important. <laughs> um, as far as things I like about the show and don't like, um, I do like that it's edited pretty well. I feel like, you know, we have interesting stuff. We usually have good things to talk about. I was really, really happy with our last episode with uh, Coach Obi. Um, I felt like that was a really big step forward, and I think stuff like that moving forward will be great. And as far as, like, dislike, kind of like you said, just – Maybe the relatively low interaction. I mean, we're growing. I'd definitely say that. I mean, we have more followers and everything, but just getting views up and getting interaction up and just getting more people exposed to what we do. But I don't know. I, I think that'll come with time, and that, that's not everything. So, yeah, if I had to say one thing I dislike, I would say just relatively low interaction, I guess. All right, so the little surprise we have at the end of the episode, if you've listened this far. Rick and I discussed a little giveaway, so you might want to keep your eyes out. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, we've kind of come up with uh, a little idea, maybe something that could drum up some extra support and buzz for the show and just for our product and everything like that. So definitely, like he said, be on the lookout for that. See, uh, see what might be come in the listener's way well you know i think we're kind of coming down to a close on uh, episode 13 i think we kind of touched on everything that's going on in titan's land right now and hopefully next week um we're both going to be on spring break so that will be good time for some live shows and maybe you know a special guest or two or just you know some special things going on and maybe some more you know maybe we have a couple special discussions in mind you know or something you know a little different than our normal shows so we'll definitely uh again keep an eye on us we're gonna be you know hopefully doing some cool things in the near future so definitely uh stay locked on the feels like 99 podcast Got a little something special brewing here, it feels like 99. So, uh, Drake, is that all you got? Yep, I think we've covered just about everything for this one. Well, I guess we will see you guys next week. Stay based. 
You've been listening to the Feels Like 99 podcast with Drake Kaiser and Caleb Waters. You can find the podcast on Twitter at Feels Like 99 Pod. Uh, you can find the Feels Like 99 podcast on our new website, Feels Like 99.wordpress.com. And you can find just about everything you need, need there. You can find the archives of the Feels Like 99 podcast on YouTube. If you search Feels Like 99 podcast, you can subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. You can find my co host, Drake Kaiser, on Twitter at Drake Kaiser underscore. You can find myself on Twitter at Caleb Waters underscore 14. Tell a friend about the Feels Like 99 podcast. Could be a friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, Titans fan, Jags fan. Could be any of them, you know. We talk about more than just the Titans. We talk about it all on the Feels Like 99 podcast. It's a podcast for everybody, guys. Uh, so, signing off uh, for myself and my co host, Drake Kaiser. This is Caleb. Thanks, ugly guy. Thanks, ugly guy. Dude, I don't know what just happened.